What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so um, you may recognize this individual, especially if you're my age and older. Uh, he was one of the most prolific character actors in film in the last 60 plus years. Henry Silva died on September the 14th at the age of 95. One day, one day before his 96th birthday. He was born in Brooklyn on September the 15th, 1926, although some earlier obituaries had his date of birth being 1928. That was actually incorrect. He was born in 1926. He was born in Brooklyn. He grew up in Harlem, and he eventually quit school to take drama classes. In 1955 and 1956, Silva went to Broadway as the character Mother in Michael V. Gatto's play, A Hat Full of Rain. He would later go on to play the character again in the 1957 film Adaption and had an appearance in at least two movies from the rest of the 50s and through the 1970s. Other credits from his filmography include 1962's The Manchurian Candidate, Johnny Cool in a 1963 film, of the same name, and 1999's Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai. Much of Silva's storied career can be attributed to when he and his family moved to Italy in 1965 after a producer made him an offer that saw him as a hero rather than a villain or henchman. Between 1966 and 1977, he starred in nearly 25 films, much of which were Italian crime dramas. Crime dramas. In 1966's The Hills Run Red served as his star-making turn, at least in Italy, Spain, Germany, and France. One of the things about in America was he did indeed become typecast as a villain. A villain, henchman, criminal, crime lord. He tended to be, he had one of those looks where he looked like he was you know, he like he could be a criminal, which I'm pretty sure got on his nerves after a while. Perhaps famously for DC Animation fans, Silver provided the voice for Bane in 1992's Batman the Animated Series and again in its 1998 sequel series and the 1996 Superman cartoon. Silver's last role would be as a boxing commentator in Ocean's Eleven, the 2001 remake of the 1960 uh, crime film he starred in as Roger Corneille. I'll remember him, for some reason, it's not his most memorable role, but I remember Henry Silva as the evil and sadistic drug peddling colonel from above the law which was Steven Seagal's first movie. I'll always remember him in that movie. Um, one thing that's interesting is in that movie, in that last fight scene, now, of course, in the movie, Steven Seagal breaks his fucking arm and then breaks his neck. But in actuality, Henry Silva broke Steven Seagal's nose. Like when you see Henry Silva, his character punch Steven Seagal, I guess he had meant to, to throw back his punch, but he hit Steven Seagal too hard. And in reality, Steven Seagal nose was broken. And um, that's why in those last scenes when he's on the couch talking to the senator, you see what looks like a scar. He literally, he actually did have his his nose broken by Henry Silva, which is very interesting considering that this year we've had two actors, Henry Silva and Gene LaBelle, who whooped his ass in real life, even though he has this, you know, this image, Steven Seagal is this unbeatable fighting machine, but Gene LaBelle really, uh, embarrassed Steven Seagal, you know, choking him out and whatnot. But anyway, 
Rest in peace to the actor Henry Silva. Those of you who are familiar with him, tell me what you guys think.